Hi everybody, so in video 2113 we talked about the heirloom wind turbine and what it was in general. What I want to do now is look a bit deeper in it, into it and have a look at how it actually generates the power. Now I'm going to draw some parallels and I'm going to draw the parallels because I think they're an aid to understanding. I don't want to rubbish what heirloom are doing. I don't want to suggest that they're just rehashing old ideas. I think that what they're doing is actually pretty cool but it is based on what went before, and what went before will certainly help us understand very clearly what heirloom are up to. Now, I don't know if you remember this. This is in fact a squirrel cage rotor, and we've got some airfoil shaped blades in there, held apart by two rigid rings, one there and one there. If we were to replace those with a flexible cable in the center, we will in fact have generated ourselves an heirloom generator. We do it this way because what we wanted to do at the time was transfer this rotation to a central axle to drive a single generator. Now heirloom said that their blades are free to rotate and so they can be trimmed and of course we did create this where the wings are free to rotate but again we have a rigid ring at the bottom and a rigid ring at the top and the energy is transferred through the bottom ring to one single generator and this is one of the things that actually I find quite gratifying because for ages I've been talking about generation at the rim as opposed to generation at the centre. The idea with the standard HAWT is the wind interplays with these. The torque is transferred to a central generator and that's the standard way of generating. Generating from this centre requiring a great deal of torque. And of course I was saying that all of the energy really is on the tip of the blade and very little is actually here and this is pretty much wasted space. If you're able to use this section and generate at the rim then you're going to get better generation. It's something I've been saying for years. Now it seems that heirloom have taken that on board. Now what I mean by generation at the rim is that the coil is actually on the rim of the device and then we have a disc with a load of magnets on it and as it rotates of course the generation takes place here. Rather than having a central generator on the shaft, the generation actually is right at the edge of the machine. Now all the machines I've showed you so far have had rigid structures, that's if they've been ring designs and they've been fairly rigid, but conceptually, in fact practically, there's no real difference between having a rigid ring and having a flexible cable or a chain taking the place of the rigid ring. You still have identically the same structure with the same philosophy of generation at the rim. Now, Aeroman are being, uh, sorry, Aeroloom are being a bit um, coy about that. And on their um, imagery, what they just point out is an arrow saying <laughs> power takeoff. So you're left to wonder how exactly that power is being drawn off. They talk about a linear generator. So I'm thinking that what's on that cable is a linear magnet passing a linear coil at the rim. Here, of course, we've got a serpentine coil, but again, conceptually, there's no difference. In fact, practically, there's no difference between what we've done here and what they're doing on the aero mine. Uh, uh, yeah, heirloom. There we go, I keep getting aero mine and heirloom mixed up, but no difference between what they're doing on the heirloom generator and what we've been doing over a whole range of videos. It's identical in its concept is what I want to get there because you'll get a hold of what it is that they're doing much more easily, I think. We did exactly the same thing with our airball generator. The magnets are on the rim, we're generating at the rim. Now, saying something and doing something are two different things. Although we can talk about the principles and how we've been using those principles already, that's not the same thing as creating a model based on what heirloom have actually done. So I thought that's what I would do, create a model. I didn't like the idea of the cable. I thought that was gonna be uh, a little difficult to handle at a model size. So I'm going to do a chain driven version because we've already got these chains. We've designed them, we've printed them, we've used them, I quite like them. So we're going to do a chain model. 
In this early prototype development that I'm looking at, I've created an NACA airfoil with a couple of the links attached to there at a 30 degree angle to the angle of the chain. So I can put these together as a chain of these, and there we go, we have a chain of them, and then we can chain those together, and there are five links between each one. So 67 links will be here, and 67 links will be here, making us a total double chain loop of 11 of these and so we're going to put that together to see what kind of structure we're actually going to get and how well it's going to work and whether it's going to work in accordance with some of the things I'm thinking. Of course we need a structure. Now for the structure all I've actually done is printed a square. And at the corners of the squares, I put little recesses to take some skater bearings because I love skater bearings. One goes in each corner, and then we can put these on, which are drive cogs, which just go into this be bearing like that. There's a little clip at the back that will glue onto the back, and we put those on all four corners on both of these structures. So that's what they look like when they're done, and they've got these little clips just glued on the back there so that they're free to spin, and there's one for the top and one for the bottom, because now we've put all the links together, and there it is with our flaps between, of course we've got a top and bottom chain. All these links are five apart from this one which is six, and that's because of the unevenness of that, it needs an extra link just to make sure that it fits. Now we've got it there, we can put it on there and connect those up. Okay, that's it put together. I do like working with models. When I get something in my hands, I can start to think about it rather than it being a little bit esoteric. I put uh, three of these, incidentally. These are 131 millimeter long by eight millimeter rods that I printed, and they're in the files, uh, and they're in the center there. They go in those three holes to give it a bit of uh, rigidity in that direction. Having made this, of course, what we can see is that it is going that way around, but equally, of course, that way around will be just as good, and I imagine it would work really well in water. I haven't added tubercles yet because I'm still sort of working out ideas and obviously when I look at this I can see some things that I would change about it immediately. I mean we've put two chains on it and they had one central cable. I do like the chains, I'll keep those, but these flaps are a little nearer and when I made the chains I made them rigid because I figured that they would flap around on the chain a little bit. I don't actually think that's enough so I, I think what I need to do is um, decrease this so I've got a bit more clearance and have a way that this is a a bit more free to flap like we did in the earlier version but that's it put together as a model of course I have made these files available on Thingiverse should anybody want them and the link is down in the description but <laughs> it's pretty cool it reminds me a bit actually of a tank track of course as this turns, these gears also turn, so it's another takeoff possibility here, is that if we put a um, central generator on these poles, then of course we could take off the energy there, rather than having this um, generation at the rim that I like, we could actually put it on there and be a bit more traditional about it. Okay, so even though I think there's a lot wrong with this, we've got to see if it works, haven't we? There's not much wind, so what I've got is a fan here, a blower fan, so we're going to turn that blower fan on it, and of course I'm pointing it at the blade, so I'm giving it its best chance to work, but let's turn it on and see if we can actually get that to rotate. <laughs> that is awesome, hey? <laughs> okay, that was awesome, and without wanting to sound too arrogant, uh, I actually really expected that to work, so it's no real surprise, because it's all the same stuff. The only reason it's a circle is because we want to have it on a central generator, mostly by habit. And if we don't want that anymore, then a, a circle doesn't matter if it's a circle or a square or a triangle or whatever it is. And of course, all motion is relative, so it equally doesn't matter if it's that way up. It doesn't matter if the circle follows that path or we follow a zigzag path. None of this stuff actually is any different. It's all conceptually the same. Of course, in terms of engineering, it's different, and so you have to build it and see, because you think one thing, and then the actual build will show you other things that you didn't think about for all the best will in the world, and sometimes you think about things that 
well, it's a waste of time doing them. But doing a build teaches you so much about what you really need to be thinking about. So, of course, I have made this available. I'd love it if people took it up and, and changed it, made their own device, looked at what they thought was important and built something and shared that with everybody. I'll be having a better look at this because I did enjoy that, actually, and see what else we can do with it and whether we can improve it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.